Well, ladies and gentlemen, we knew it was only a matter of time before the director of the Marvels was going to rear her ugly head. You know, no pun intended. Uh, she was definitely going to say something about the backlash that she's getting for the movie. It was only a matter of time, man. Nia DaCosta cannot keep her mouth shut. She's the one that was doing a lot of the pre-release interviews, and she was talking about how diversity is their strength and all this other nonsense and how it's going to be a great step for feminism and women's films and all this other garbage. She's the one they came out and said all of this stuff. Now, apparently, according to an article from CBR, it says the Marvel's director reacts to MCU's film's woke criticism. The Marvel's director, Nia DaCosta, addresses the Marvel's getting criticized by some for going woke. So it's guaranteed to be a funny-ass article. So let's get into the article, guys, from CBR. But, of course, before we do, if you are new here, just consider hitting that subscribe button, man. I would greatly appreciate it and like the video to push this out into the YouTube algorithm. It says the Marvel's director, Nia DaCosta, chooses to focus on the positive side of Marvel's fandom to deal with the woke backlash surrounding the film. Let's be very clear, okay? The backlash surrounding the film we knew was going to happen, all right? We, we've been saying it for, like, what, months now? We've been saying that this movie was going to bomb, and they swore up and down that it wasn't going to. They swore on Twitter. You had all these people supporting the film, right? Everybody on Twitter was supporting the film. They were saying this is going to be a great film. We're going to go watch this film. This is a, a big stride for women, a big stride for diversity, blah, 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 blah. Those same fucking people are nowhere to be found with this film. Those same exact people have not spent a single dollar to go support this movie. These are the same people that will go support a movie like Barbie, okay? A lot of women will go see that film, but they're not seeing this film. It makes you wonder why that is. Could it be that the demographic for this kind of film, this kind of superhero movie, is probably not women? Makes you wonder, right? So it says these days it becomes common for any movie focusing on women and people of color to be described as going woke. Keep in mind, guys, this is a CBR article, so they're obviously very woke themselves. And the Marvels has been no exception. However, per Variety, the cost has shared how she's refusing to let it affect her thoughts on the fandom along with her film. The director who described herself as a big old fan of nerdy shit for a long time, meaning she wasn't. Why why do they do this? Why why do people like this do this? Like you're you are not going to convince me that you're a big old fan of nerdy shit, right? And then they always try to add at the end, oh, I've been I've been a fan for a long time. Have you really? Have you really? Can you even tell me what your favorite comic book is? Can you? You know, it's the same thing like with Director X. When we asked him on stream, right? He said he was a big fan of nerdy shit. And then we asked him, well, what what what's what's your favorite comic? Like what what comic did you like that you like growing you know growing up? He had no answer. He just deviated to something completely different. And it's the same thing that this person would say as well. Like they they can't even name their favorite comic, right? Or maybe you're not a comic fan. Maybe you're a manga fan. Can you can you name your favorite manga? Can you name anything? No, probably not. So I don't buy it that she's a fan of nerdy shit for a long time. I highly highly doubt it. She's only saying this to try to give herself some sort of street cred because she's making a superhero film. So it explained how she's able to ignore the more toxic criticism. Okay, from a certain subsect of the fan base by keeping her attention on the other part that welcomes civilized critique. These are the pockets where you go because you're like, I'm a super fan. I want to exist in a space of just adoration, which includes civilized critique, DaCosta said. Then there are pockets that are really virulent and violent and racist and sexist and homophobic and all those awful things. And I chose the side of the light. That's part of fandom I'm most attracted to. <laughs> It, do you see what I'm saying? Do you, do you see it? This is what I said in my last video, okay? Right here. This is exactly what I said in my last video about the whole Stephen King thing, how he doesn't understand. This is the problem. You have people like this who are trying to say, whoa, a lot of the criticism is just from racist, sexist, and homophobics. Are you serious right now? This is such a simplistic way to have your mindset, right? You think with such a simplistic mindset that you're able to just take everything that you're hearing and just blame racism, sexism, homophobia on it. Like that is such an easy cop out. And this is the problem with modern day storytelling. This is the problem with modern day movies and studios. This is why people wanted this movie to fail. Nobody wants a movie or a game or anything to come out and wish it was bad. If they wished it was bad, that means you did something to piss them off before the movie even came out and that's exactly the problem that's going on here people wanted this movie to fail 
because it's a reaction to nonsense like this, where they're getting called racist, sexist, and homophobic for liking their content the way that they liked it. It's insane. You guys are the problem. It says, while the Marvels hasn't been without its criticism, it's landing rather well with film, film goers. Well, okay, so, so you mean the fact that they are literally uh, filtering reviews. You know, Rotten Tomatoes does this all the time. They filter reviews because at the end of the day, it's been proven that they get paid for reviews. So why would we take Rotten Tomatoes seriously at all? It is very obvious when you look at the audience score, how there was only, I think at the time that I'm filming this, like 500 verified reviews, 500 reviews, that's it? For, for the Marvels? You mean to tell me only 500 people reviewed it? No, it's very obvious that when you go to the all audience score, it tells the truth of the matter. And it's not that it's necessarily bad. It's just that the movie is average at best. So the high scores that you're seeing right now is because it is filtered. It is always filtered. And Rotten Tomatoes will continue to filter it so long as those checks keep coming in from Disney. So it says it's boasting an audience score of 84% on Rotten Tomatoes, a bit higher than its critic score of 62%. But while most filmgoers are leaving the theater feeling satisfied for the most part, the trouble with the Marvels is in its theatrical performance. It has the record low with the lowest opening weekend numbers for any MCU film ever. The disappointing turnout could be attributed to multiple factors as a lack of promotion, bullshit, certainly was not helping matters, and the rise of superhero fatigue seems to be real, given how other Marvel and DC films alike have been bombing in theaters. Ladies and gentlemen, that is BS. Again, it is another cop out that they're trying to utilize to their advantage. Nobody is saying that that promotion because the movie really the movie couldn't be promoted, so that's what made it bad. There was advertising for this everywhere. You think by Brie Larson opening her mouth that was actually going to help the movie? No, it was actually helping the movie that she couldn't speak. That's the hilarious thing about all this. Like this is the reason why I can't even take it serious, man. And now they're trying to say, oh no, it's superhero fatigue. Really? It's superhero fatigue. That's interesting, considering that people will actually go see a superhero movie that people actually like. See, the problem is word of mouth is still prominent. Word of mouth is still dominant in terms of the best advertising you could possibly have. So when people go see these movies that they actually like, yeah, it's going to do really well. And where's the excuse for superhero fatigue then? Oh, but you're going to say, oh, well, those films had white male leads and that's why people went to go see it. Okay. Come on. At the end of the day, this is not about superhero fatigue. This is about bad movie fatigue. People are tired of bad movies. So you can lump in DC, but DC makes shitty movies, okay? The DCU movies are garbage. They are literally garbage. And the reason why they're failing is because they're garbage. They are rushed movies. They were trying to create some sort of endgame MCU within like one-tenth of the time. They were trying to get to an Avengers-level movie with literally no time invested and barely any solo films. They didn't take their time. They rushed everything. And DC overall is just garbage. Their, their one-off movies are much better. Joker, fantastic. The Batman, fantastic for the most part. But their DCU films, absolutely garbage. 100% garbage. Black Adam, average at best. The Flash, garbage. So you can make up all these excuses for why it's bombing in theaters, but we all know why the real reason is, and that is simply the fact that these movies are garbage. So it says, I think superhero fatigue absolutely exists. The cause of the previously told total film, suggesting the film's wacky tone will help the Marvels feel more unique. How? The biggest difference from the other MCU movies to date is that it's really wacky and silly. The worlds we go into... What? How is this... How is being wacky and silly making you different from every other MCU film? Literally every MCU film is wacky and silly. It, its entire personality is wacky and silly. So that's not, that's not separating yourself. That's just making you meld with everybody else. There's, there's nothing separating about that. Literally, if you look at what happened to Thor, they just made him wacky and silly. You look at Ant-Man, wacky and silly. Everything is wacky and silly in the MCU. So Nia DaCosta is saying, oh, this movie separates itself because it's wacky and silly. You're just stupid, man. I, I, I can't with these people at the end. Oh, man, it's terrible. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.